Hello YouTube. This is uh, my view count is going up like crazy right now. Unfortunately, I can't get any, get any accents from it at the moment. But this uh, video is about the story on smoking gun and meet the Amish guys who refused to attach the orange triangles. Now they actually appealed this to the district court and they're going I guess appealing it to the to the state court in Kentucky but but um, before they could do that they were um, uh, arrested and put in jail for for refusing to pay the fines for contempt of court um, that guy looks like he's really looking down. This one has his eyes closed. That one is looking right at you. Not sure what he's doing. Can't see his eyes. Uh, that that one's looking into your soul. Anyway, they uh, this is Swords and Troopers, which is what I grew up with. While well, members of the Swords and Troopers say will fix uh, reflective tape to the rear of their buggies this skew use of bright triangle which they consider too modern in my opinion that that uh, it's not, not about safe, um, being too modern it's about just safety you know anyway they were given three to ten days now this was uh, I think they they already some of them at least uh, did their time already and some others are probably still in in jail for the three to ten days is th this was posted on the 14th so so some of them are already probably out of jail uh, the men were booked Monday night into Grace Hunter refusing to pay fines on grounds that their religious religion bars them from wearing or displaying bright colors jail for the misdemeanor of court inmates were provided dark colored jumpsuits in place of standard issued orange coveralls. I was thought it was kinda of interesting that they the standard issue to have orange coveralls for uh, for misdemeanors. Uh, but I don't know what that's all about. Because uh, I thought orange only goes for for uh, Uh, felonies, but this was not, these were not felonies, but i like to uh, make a point here that if they lose this case in, say, in the Supreme Court, the U.S. Supreme Court, this would be like a, a law that would be all over the United States and not just in Kentucky anymore. Uh, but if they do lose, uh, if they do win it, as it, as, uh, as in Wisconsin versus, Yoder was, was versus Wisconsin, uh, then uh, no one, uh, no, none of the, the Amish basically would have to uh, have these triangles at all. So uh, that's, I'm not sure if, uh, <laughs> If that's going to happen, I don't know what, what what's going to happen yet, but but that's a possibility. Now, the Yoder versus Wisconsin case, I do not really agree with with that case. I do agree with the was a dissenting opinion on that on that case. Let's go to go to Google and and. Uh, Wisconsin. And there's what I was looking for. Wikipedia. This the descending opinion. I agree with the court that religious couples of the Amish are opposed to education of their children beyond eighth grade. Yet I disagree with the court's 
conclusion that the matter is, is within the dispensation of parents alone. The court's analysis assumes that the only interests are at stake in the, the case are those of the Amish parents on the on the one hand and those of the state on the other. The difficulty of, of this approach is that despite the court's claim, parents are seeking to vindicate not only their own free exercise claims but also those those of their uh, high school age children. On this important and vital matter of education, I think that children should be entitled to be heard, and I agree. Uh, while the parents absent dissent normally speak for the entire family, the education of the child is a matter on which the child will often be have decided views. He may want to be a pianist or a astronaut or an oceanographer. To uh, do so, he will have to break from the Amish tradition. It is the future of the students, not the future of the parents, that is imperiled by today's decision. If a parent keeps his child out of school beyond grade school, then the child will forever bar from entry into the new and amazing world of diversity that we have today. The child may decide that that is the preferred course or he may rebel. It is the student's judgment, not his parents, that is essential if we are to give full meaning to what we have said about the Bill of Rights and the rights of the students and to the masters of their own destiny. If it is harnessed to the Amish way of life by those in authority over him and if his education is truncated, his entire life may be stunned and deformed. The child, therefore, should be given an opportunity to be hurt before the state gives the, the exemption which we honor today. So, um, I agree with him on that because, I mean, if I had a chance to go to a, to a high school or get, well, I could get my GED, but, but uh, high school is, is actually supposed to be more, um, two grades higher than, than, than GED, but anyway, uh, I could also go pay $600 and go go to high school now, but without a high school education, I really don't have as much of a, of a chance to, uh, uh, to get a job that I would otherwise. By the way, this, uh, this opinion was, uh, Justice Douglas, William O. Douglas, uh, here, here's his photo. Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court. He apparently died in, in the year I was born. He lasted in the Supreme Court for uh, 36 years. Anyway, I agree with what he had to say about that case and and the Amish, in this case, the one I'm, I'm talking about here, they're kind of risking their freedom, so to speak, with, uh, with this case, because it could become a law nationwide with, with this kind of uh, case like this. Anyway. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.